Hi, my name is Dr. Sophie Thorold and I will be presenting this concept map on hematuria and dysuria. The causes of hematuria can be broken down into two main categories. The first being general causes, so these cause bleeding in any part of the body. And then we have the local causes, which just cause bleeding in the urinary system and causing the hematuria. Using the surgical sieve, we can split down our potential diagnoses into um, a select few differential diagnoses using the history, the examination and investigations. So these can be split into the categories shown um, with the an acronym vitamin C, D, E, F. Here we can see um, we've populated some of these categories with differential diagnoses. We've got vascular causes, including renal artery aneurysms. We have inflammatory and infective causes, including UTIs and glomerular nephritis. We have traumatic causes, including injuries, rhabdomyolysis. We have metabolic causes, including urolithosis. We have iatrogenic causes, including drugs, neoplastic, neurological and nutritional. So we've got blood tumour, renal tumour, ureteric tumour. And then we have congenital, so polycystic kidney disease. We now move on to the flowchart for hematuria and dysuria. But before we start, I want to point out my picture of three wine glasses. No, I'm not just an alcoholic. There is a good reason for them being there. When you're describing hematuria, the way in medicine we describe it is using the colour of wine. Normal urine being similar to white wine. If there's a bit of blood in it, it might be the colour of rosé. If there's a lot of blood in the urine, it's more the colour of Merlot. This is important when you're handing over a patient, perhaps on the phone, and the other doctor or member of the MDT can't see the patient for themselves. We now look at a patient who has dysuria and hematuria and you elicit from the history that they've had either a recent catheterisation or sexual intercourse. We can uh, attribute these symptoms to trauma. We now look at a patient who has not had recent catheterisation or sexual intercourse. They have loin to groin pain but they are afebrile. We can attribute this cause to renal stones. Moving on to a patient who may or may not have dysuria, but they do have hematuria. They also have vomiting or fever or abdominal pain with a positive urine dip. We can put this down to a UTI. We now look at the patient who may or may not have dysuria. They do have hematuria and they answer no to vomiting, fever, abdominal no pain, a positive urine dip. We ask them, do you ha uh, have high blood pressure and protein in your urine? If the answer is yes, we look at nephritic syndrome. If the answer is no, we look at polycystic kidney disease or rhabdomyolysis or balanitis. Rhabdomyolysis can be caused in elderly people by a fall and a long lie. In young people, it can be caused by extreme exercise such as running marathons. Following the same flow diagram, this is overflowed onto a separate slide. We've got a patient with hematuria and no dysuria. We ask them the question, have they had any weight loss? If the answer is no, we look at um, are they anticoagulated or do they have a congen congenital um, bleeding disorder? If the answer is yes to weight loss, do they have a pelvic mass or pelvic pain? Yes. We might look at a diagnosis of renal stones. If the answer is no, is there colicky pain? Um, and are they also obstructed? We can look at maybe a ureteric tumour in these patients. If the answer is no, we look at have they got a palpable abdominal mass or a fever of unknown origin? If the answer is yes, we might look at a renal tumour. If the answer is no, we might look at inflammatory causes such as glomerular nephritis. Now we move on to the patient with dysuria and no hematuria. Is the cause infectious? Yes. And this gives a list of 
um, diagnoses. I'll just talk through a few of these. Urethritis is an infective dermatological malignant atrophic condition and it causes itchiness and soreness and burning around the urethra and it's more common in men and you often get some discharge with it. With cervicitis again you get some discharge and it's usually caused by STIs. You may also get some post bleeding but also it may be asymptomatic. Now we look at non-infectious causes. Is it caused by stones? Nope. We look at other causes of urethral obstruction. If it is caused by stones, the majority are renal stones. The others are bladder stones, and this is caused by urine sitting in the bladder. It, in men, this may be um, chronic retention. In women, a retained foreign body. Also, long-term catheter is a risk factor for this. Thank you for listening to this concept map on hematuria and dysuria.